Alright guys, uh, your first video on matter should be about classifying it. Once you can classify and understand what matter is, then you'll be able to learn how to separate it. So this is your first key, okay? So matter is made up of anything that takes up space, right? So the simplest thing you could say, it's made up of elements, okay? So stuff on the periodic table, if you look to the, uh, on the board, on the wall in the classroom, you'll see a periodic table. All matter is made of that. But that doesn't give you everything, okay? So, but we can start with that. So when we talk about something that that has just elements in it and they're bonded together, then we're talking about elements and compounds. So elements and compounds are only uh, on the periodic table. So the difference between these two guys is that this is made of just single elements. So this is like uh, an exam. So I could give you some examples, but anything on the periodic table. So we got Na, sodium. You could do bromine. You could go on to carbon. You could go to chlorine. I could go on and on, obviously. Boron. And we could go to fluorine. All of those are examples of just single elements. Now, if they bond to each other, and we'll get into what a bond really is later on, but when they bond to each other, then you're talking about a compound. So a compound is defined as two or more elements bonding together. So examples of that would be what you're breathing out right now. So an example would be CO2. Okay, you're breathing in oxygen. That's another example. Oxygen is bonded to itself, O2. Uh, we can bond a couple of these together. So, NaCl, that's salt actually. Sodium will blow up in water or, turn, or light up on fire, and Cl was used in World War I for mustard gas, so it would uh, burn out your hives. So, those two together, though, bonded together, you put on food. So, We'll talk about that later on, but all of these things are made up of elements, okay? So that's kind of why we call these pure substances. They're not just substances. They're pure, so they're just made of elements, okay? Now, when you're combining maybe a compound with another compound, but they're not bonded together, then we're talking about something different, and those are mixtures. So we're going to go over here. We're going to talk about mixtures. Now, before we get into that, when you know that these things are single elements, you know that these cannot be separated any further. Because Na is sodium, it's an atom. You can't go any you cannot go any simpler than an atom when you want to um, break it down into anything else. So uh, when you're breaking up uh, these things, you got to understand that if you got, like, for example, if you have chlorine, you can't break chlorine up any further. So anything on the periodic table is done. Now, these guys, though, have bonds between them. So you can separate these, okay? So this can be separated. The only difference, though, between how these can be separated and these is how strong uh, they're connected together. We'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? But we're going to get into mixtures now. There are two types of mixtures, okay? So I'm going to kind of go over here, just kind of running out of room. And we have homogeneous, and we have heterogeneous. So if you know these two words before, if you've used them in other science classes, you'll know that this means same. So I'll just kind of put same here. And this is different. So that's going to help you kind of understand what that means, okay? So homogeneous uh, mixture would be something, an example would be like a solution. And a solution is where you have a substance that is put into another substance where it's uniformly, uniform means the same, mixed together. So when we're talking about solutions, it's equally distributed.
distributed. So think of the word equal, okay? It's equally distributed all over. So examples of this would be uh, salt water. Meaning if I took a glass of salt water and I put a little bit in one cup and a little bit in another, they would be equal amounts of salt in each one. They are uniform, they are the same. So when we're talking about homogenous, we're talking about usually solutions in salt water. Um, sugar water would be another example. You, you can think of many others, but it's mainly that there's, um, there's, a, there's some sort of solid mixed in with some sort of liquid usually, and it's uniform, it's mixed throughout together. So homogenous, same, equal, and examples would be salt water and sugar water. Heterogeneous, though, are a little different, okay? So these, we're not going to get into um, uh, too much of what the differences are, but I'm just going to go into the, the one that I want to focus on, and that's like a suspension. And a suspension means you can, you can basically physically see the difference between them. So if you put rocks in water, okay? They are different, right? They're not equally distributed. If I pour water um, rock, you know, with rocks in it, I pour some, maybe one rock is in one cup, and then five rocks are in another. So knowing that, knowing that there's um, a different amount in each one, it's not equal, it's not distributed equally, you'll know the difference, okay? That's why the heterogeneous means difference, homo homogeneous means same, okay? So think about um, looking at those solutions and just going, can I pour or can I take a substance, can I break it up and do I get the same amount of each one? That you're talking about homogeneous, okay? Now, going back to this, mixtures in general are components of, uh, we have compounds or elements, but the main idea is you have many different, so you have different elements and compounds, but the big thing is they're not bonded together. Not bonded. So let's talk about salt water. For example, salt water, we have NaCl. I told you that is salt, right? So water is H2O, if you've heard of that. So I could just kind of put that over here, and we go H2O, and that's water, and salt, NaCl. Notice that these two are, H2O is bonded, the H's and O's are bonded together, the Na's and Cl's are bonded together, but the H2O and NaCl are not bonded together. They're not bonded. So you have compounds mixed together, but there is no bond. Here, we have bonds, okay, with the compounds. So that means elements are bonded together. The C and the O2 are bonded. They're not, you cannot um, separate them very easily. We'll talk about that in a second. But the main idea here is, same thing, if we have rocks in water, obviously you have rocks on, in, in the water. They're not gonna bond together. If I pour rocks in water, they don't bond and form a, a different compound, right? So they're separate. So they're not bonded together. Sugar water, same thing. You could have glucose, H6, H12, um, C12O6. You could put that in water, H2O, and you're getting something that's not, they're not going to form something else. They are separate from each other. So that leads to the whole idea of the difference between how you can separate mixtures from pure substances. Obviously, you cannot separate elements, but you can be you can separate compounds. And obviously these can be separated too. Okay? You can separate these guys. The difference here is you gotta chemically separate these guys because you have to break bonds. To separate, you have to break bonds. You have to break those bonds. Here you don't have to break any bonds because there's not they're not bonded together. So if I want to take salt and water out, you know, you can look at physical properties. So you can physically separate them. So I'm going to put physical, physically, okay? You can physically separate mixtures. So example, salt water. Salt has a higher boiling point than water. 
So if you boil salt water, the water will evaporate and come off of the solution, and what's left is salt. You were able to separate that. If I took water, just H2O, so that could be another compound. If I take H2O and I boil it, I still get water just at a different phase. That would be like, a, you know, I'm going from a liquid to a gas. It's still water, though. When you change phases, you don't change the actual compound. So make sure that you're kind of looking at this and going, okay, is, is, is there just elements? Then I would have pure substances. Are the elements bonded together? Then I have compounds. Do I have compounds and maybe some elements, but they're not bonded together? Then I have mixtures. And if they're equally distributed, I have solutions. And if they're not, I have uh, basically suspensions. And that's heterogeneous versus homogeneous. Okay, so kind of work on, uh, you know, we started with, with um, classifying these matter, the matter, and then we started looking at separating them. So you have to know what you're talking about with classifying them before you can get into anything else regarding uh, how to separate them. All right, so this would be a good start for you.